online and we'll be selling lots of records. So he I'm says, really so he says, if not, we'll still be on plan nine selling lots of records. Now, here's the thing. Here's what's kind of, here's a weird, interesting thing to think about people. Think about this. We've talked again, uh, obviously redundantly, because this is redundant because we've literally hashed out so many of these topics to death. Glenn, I've talked about how Glenn has built the perfect network, the perfect distribution network, right? Literally, the perfect distribution network. He took, um, he took Plan Nine. He got distribution for Plan Nine, but he was he was in complete control and he was directly connected with the fan base and he was selling uh crazy amounts of records during the Sam Hain time. I would imagine his numbers must have been excellent, right? Um this model at the time might not have been as desirable even though he has the most control. Why? Because in the 80s it's the 80s is like the height of well, really, I guess it would really peak in the '90s, right? It would peak in the '90s, and then Napster would would destroy the entire model. But this idea of being a working artist that you know your day job was that you were a musician. Erie's day job was that he was a musician, like on that kind of level. You know, this was the thing to go get signed, get the advance. Uh, record the album, go out, tour on the album, do it all over again, wash, rinse, repeat over and over and over again. Right. Um, that's not, that is not ideal for musicians today and musicians out there. Tell me, I'm tell me if I'm wrong, I'm not a musician, but that's not ideal anymore <clears throat> because a record labels don't really mean shit in the age of the internet. Oops. I cursed record labels. Don't really mean nothing in the age of the internet. B, the internet has taken that model that Glenn had the analog version of and sort of made it even more effortless and easy for you if you have a good content, a good product, and you know your way around production of any kind, if you could shoot your own music videos, if you could record your own music, if you get yourself out there, if you keep creating content, you can build a presence on the web and be connected to every single niche that would be in your music. This was not the case at the time. However, what is fascinating is that today, I think Glenn, what Glenn had then is every music would, would be every maybe independent artist's wet dream at this point to have a network set up the way and obviously not the the analog kind like a digital version of that and i mean a lot of bands most certainly do i think every band actually kind of honestly does but no but 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 you have to think every band that's doing this today they're doing so it's like this independent model but it was like this started with like punk rock man this really started with punk rock and it wasn't even it's not it's not like bands like the Ramones. The Ramones were signed to Sire Records. The Sex Pistols were signed to EMI. Where did they get kicked off EMI? Hmm. Um, we're talking about the the hardcore bands and the you know the Black Flags and the Misfits and like you know these bands that sort of came up and like you know fostered deep meaningful connections with their fans in ways that no punk band had before dead boys not the dead boys dead boys were on sire not patty smith not television not richard hell and the voidoids you know so it's kind of interesting to think that this model that i would imagine would be a wet dream today you know because essentially the record label just becomes a middleman oh we gotta recoup our advance we gotta we gotta uh, wet our beak you know, today, record deal contracts, because of the way things are, sorry, this is such a tangent, the way that things are today, they get a piece of merchandise on the road, they get, you know, all sorts of stuff, because they need their bite. For what? And it's the same thing, I'm in the film world, and you know what? Distribution deals are kind of BS at this point. It's like, it's like, uh, it's a validation. Oh, we're signed. Oh, we have distro. You know, it doesn't mean anything anymore. And so what's kind of interesting is I wonder, and I don't, I guess Glenn kind of still has this whole network set up, but I would imagine 
that for Glenn today, it would be a lot less appealing to be on the label than it would be to simply still have Plan 9 records if it existed. That's all I'm saying. Steve says, I like how it was me and Erie back then. Right. Because literally like a year before, you know, Rick Rubin's like, get, you know, let's get rid of Erie. And Glenn's like, no, we're not getting rid of Erie. So yes, I agree, Chris. I agree. Much more driven now versus album sales. Yeah. Yep. Bands giving away albums to get people to come to the shows. Yeah. I mean, here's the thing. And again, I, I say this and I say this to, I don't want to insult any musicians on here. And that's what I'm about to say is like a cold, hard truth that I don't agree with at all and wish was not a reality. The reality is because of Napster, because of digital media, because intellectual property can be digitized and put out onto the internet, no matter what, my movies, your music, free. Free. Free for whoever wants it. And so you need to find another way to make revenue off of your art. You know? Um, And that's where, you know... Steve is saying bands giving away albums. I don't, I, I think that's the wrong attitude to have about it. I think, you know, Jerry only has a really good attitude about it in Jerry only's mind for a guy who everybody calls so greedy and so money hungry and whatnot. I know I'm a big Jerry apologist. Uh, he's just, I've sort of changed my tune about him over the years. You know, I used to feel this, I used to bash Jerry all the time thinking he was, you know, the, I don't know. I've changed my tune about Jerry for a lot of reasons. Uh, but Jerry, even Jerry says the, mu- the 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 music is essentially free. It's like I need to make. He's thinking about how can I make the packaging so great that people are going to buy this. You know, how much can I put into the physical craft of something that someone needs to actually pay me for it? The DIY ethic still lives on today online. Yes, yes, Chris, one hundred percent. 